We have been getting regular updates about vaccinations and what's happening and how those are developing from Dr. Laura Morris with MU Healthcare. And it's another week where we have some news as far as what is happening as mass vaccination possibility and will be occurring at MU Healthcare. And so the doctor is on with us again. Dr. Morris, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Let's talk about uh, what we mentioned as news yesterday, and that is that now this is from the state. And as I've seen a chart, a pie chart, it shows like about 53 percent of the available doses of the coronavirus vaccine going to hospitals around the state. One of those that has been targeted and said, we believe that you could administer a lot of vaccinations in a in a targeted mass vaccination event is MU Healthcare. Explain what has happened and, and how MU Healthcare fits into the state's plans. We are super excited that we were named one of these high-throughput mass vaccination sites. And you're exactly right. The state has uh, modified its distribution model. And so they want to make sure that um, vaccines that are being distributed and sent out are getting put into arms quickly. And so Immune Healthcare, um, as everyone knows, has our site over at Fro Field. And we are administering 4,000 doses later this week in uh, two days of events. So we are gonna vaccinate about 2,000 people per day on Thursday and Saturday by appointment only. And so we invited folks from that list, that survey that we're collecting um, with invitations and phone calls that went out yesterday on Tuesday. So you will fill that up and have filled it up, I would guess, for Thursday and, and Saturday. I guess I misunderstood, and I think some in the media misunderstood yesterday and thought that might be a three-day vaccination plan, but you're saying that you can get 2,000 on Thursday and another 2,000 on Saturday, so it's going to be done in two days. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty tricky schedule because right now we are also overlapping those uh, first-dose vaccinations from this event, which which kind of came up quickly. The information evolves and... You know, we apply and ask for all the vaccine that we can get, um, and we have to make sure that we can staff those clinics and stagger the dates so that we can make sure their second dose, we have a clinic available for them, as well as we're continuing to finish up second doses from folks who got their vaccines last month. What a way to have to keep track of who has had one dose and when they're due for a second dose. How important is it to get that second dose within a certain time frame? That's a great question, and there is a little bit of flexibility, but the ideal is the Pfizer vaccine. The dose uh, number two occurs 21 days later, so three weeks later. The Moderna is slightly different in its formulation, and that second dose is four weeks later. And you need to keep your doses from the same brand. So it might be tempting, uh, but you should not try to mix the manufacturers. And if you get dose one of Moderna, you should get dose two of Moderna. So we're doing our best to coordinate our clinics to make that logistically possible. Have you been giving out the Pfizer vaccines? Uh, And I'm asking that because Moderna is what's providing the one for the mass vaccinations on Thursday and Saturday. Yes, up until this point, MU Healthcare has received only Pfizer vaccine. And uh, the the Moderna vaccine being available is great. Um, it's a little easier to handle. It has um, no need to add liquid to the vial to reconstitute it, so a little simpler process. But, you know, all of our professionals over there at the Vax Clinic are ready to go with either one. We have protocols in place for both, and we will take whatever the state will send us. We are asking for whatever we can get. Does it matter much or how much should it matter to somebody receiving a vaccine? How much should it matter whether they know it's or are getting Pfizer or Moderna at this time? Um, At this point, that makes no difference whatsoever. And in fact, I would suggest that, you know, if other vaccines coming down the pike are given the same kind of emergency use authorization and are available, that absolutely taking the opportunity to get your vaccine sooner rather than waiting for something that that you might think is a better product makes sense. But there's not much difference between Moderna and Pfizer in terms of their safety or efficacy profiles at all. Earlier this morning, quite early, I was on the New York Times website just doing some prep today, and they sent something over that came as a bulletin or late-breaking news. It was talking about a vaccine developed by um, the AstraZeneca through a University of Oxford and AstraZeneca and talking about how they now feel, at least a study by researchers at the University of Oxford, the first to document evidence that any coronavirus vaccine can reduce transmission of the virus. Uh, I think 
things are developing almost daily as far as what the vaccine's possibilities are and what those who are researching that are finding out about them. Are you seeing that also in the medical field where you're doing the clinic work? Yes, absolutely. It's it's really important to try to keep up, but I, I think that what we overshadow with all these different vaccines, you know, we focus on the efficacy percent and try to compare that. But what every single one of the vaccines, you know, worldwide has been able to do is reduce the incidence of death and severe disease. So they have taken COVID-19 from something that hospitalizes people and kills people to something that you know, maybe has milder symptoms. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not exactly perfectly the same effective percent, that is still, that's our goal, right? As we keep people out of the hospital and people out of the morgue. So all those vaccines do that. Speaking of keeping people out of the hospital, some of the lowest hospitalization numbers in several months over the last couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. We are optimistic about that, um, kind of guardedly Mm -hmm. so, because, um, you know, sometimes those trends, change pretty quickly but um, what we're doing with these vaccination campaigns and then continuing our social responsibilities with wearing masks and keeping our social distance um, are are going to help us combat this for the vaccine to work the best we need lower prevalence of disease Hmm. Uh, university of missouri healthcare physician laura morris is our guest let me ask you this what kind of questions are the offices getting what would you say are because these would be questions that some of our listeners have that they haven't had a chance to ask anybody what are you seeing as the major concerns or questions by and large um, it's the question i'm sure all of your listeners have which is when is it my turn how can i get on the list how can i move up the list um and and why aren't i being contacted yet and um you know a lot of those logistical questions can be answered if you go to the mu health.org website we have excellent information and that's where our survey link is to put your name in our pool but the real answer to when is it my turn Um, I hope is very soon, but really depends on supply. And that comes to us from our state. It comes to the state from the federal level. So we need more supply in our country and we'll get you your vaccine. Part of this makes sense to me. I'd like to hear it from a physician's point of view and especially one working at one of the hospitals that has been picked as a place where mass vaccinations can occur. So uh, as we've learned this week, 53 percent of weekly allocations from the state, what the state receives has been um, publicized as about 76,000 doses every week from the federal government, 53% of those going to selected hospitals. I think it makes sense to, to have the hospitals as a key administer of the vaccines rather than the health department. Can you help us understand why that does make sense? Well, here in our region, it certainly is about economies of scale. Um, you know, the, the point of this early campaign and these mass vaccination events is to get as many shots moving as quickly as possible. And later on in a vaccination campaign, the focus will shift and um, we'll need to make sure that we take vaccine to other places um, for people who haven't accessed our mass vax events. But right now, we can turn this over. I mean, as you heard me say, 2,000 shots in a day um, at our MU Healthcare site. And so, you know, if we're given the opportunity, we can really put that through to the community very quickly. So some of the other mass vaccinations that occurred at the end of last week, one in Mexico, Missouri, and another one in Moberly, that also used the National Guard. MU Hospital able to handle that number of vaccinations without using the National Guard to help? We are taking a a different approach um, than some of those events have, and certainly ours are are by appointment only and are scheduled and and organized in a different way. Um, But, yes, you're absolutely correct. Our um, vaccination event, we built this clinic to stand Mm -hmm. and to to work for quite a while. And those National Guard events, um, they provide logistical support for kind of a a one-off, one-time event. And... Um, and that's not what we're looking for here. We are still on what level? This would be like the vaccinations, the 4,000 later on this week at MU Hospital will be to, you know, I get my phases and my tears confused, but this would be, <laughs> I, I think, still targeting, I guess, probably most of the essential workers have already had their first doses and probably their second doses by now. So you're working on 65 plus in age and also chronic health problems? Exactly. So this is... Phase 1B, 
tier two that we're targeting with these 4,000 dose campaigns. And you will have another probably large um, doses given to you by the state a week after next. So you'll be alternating weeks. Exactly, exactly. And we, we hope that that pattern can continue, and we do continue to apply for any portion of the rest of the state's allocation um, that's not included in this program. Um, but what we know is those 4,000 doses every other week. That sounds good. Anything you want to leave us with, doctor? I just appreciate the opportunity to get this word out and make sure that everyone has uh, put their name into our pool. That's how we will identify you for an appointment. So fill out that survey on muhealth.org or call us at 771-2273 and get your name in that list. All right. And it's a pretty simple way to get your name on that list. I've done that. It didn't take hardly any time at all and makes you feel good knowing that you're there. And when your turn comes up, it'll be ready to go. Doctor, we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. That's Dr. Laura Morris, who's been our guest. This is KFRU.